Yesterday, we heard that Nigel Farage has decided not to field Brexit Party candidates in the constituencies that the Conservative Party won in 2017. The Brexit Party will not contest the 317 seats the Conservatives won at the last election. But what we will do is concentrate our total effort into all of the seats that are held by the Labour Party, who have completely broken their manifesto pledge in 2017 to respect the result of the referendum. You might remember him saying a week ago that he planned to field candidates in every constituency. So why has he stepped down from this position? Well, his poll ratings have been slowly dropping despite President Trump's recent endorsement and the fact that Johnson broke his promise to deliver Brexit by the 31st of October. So it might be because he knows that he doesn't stand much of a chance in this election. And the best the Brexit party could hope for in many constituencies is actually splitting the Brexit vote, which could ironically end up helping parties who want to stop Brexit entirely. Before we get into the decision further, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more Brexit and election content. Uh, it's been a difficult decision to make, but I have to say that last night, for the first time, I saw something since that Brussels summit that actually was optimistic, because I saw Boris Johnson on a video saying we will not extend the transition period beyond the end of 2020. According to Farage, his decision is in part because of this video that came out on Boris Johnson's Twitter yesterday morning. Hi folks, I'm out and about campaigning a lot at the moment and people ask me about the deal that we've done with our EU friends and partners and what kind of future relationship it allows us to build. Uh, we can get a fantastic uh, new uh, free trade agreement with the EU uh, by the end of 2020 and we will not extend the transition period beyond the end of 2020. There's absolutely no need to do that. Most of the video is campaign stuff but at the end Johnson says he won't extend the transition period past December 2020. His argument is that if he could agree a withdrawal agreement in three months he can agree a Canada style free trade deal with the EU in a year. We talk about this more in our video on the transition trap, which has just become super relevant. So, while we're shamelessly plugging our own videos again, please do give it a watch. Anyway, Farage seems to be saying that he'll help the Conservatives on the condition that Johnson doesn't extend the transition period. And he's turned what Johnson might have only intended as a passing comment at the end of a Twitter video into a proper commitment not to extend the transition period. Regardless, Farage seems to have taken it seriously, saying, We are going to keep saying, remember you told us we were leaving at the end of 2020. Remember you told us we're not going to have political alignment. So what will the impact actually be? Well, the Conservatives were already expecting to hold on to most of those Conservative seats that the Brexit party have decided not to stand in. But this might help them keep a few of their seats in the South and the South West against the Lib Dems. However, even if this helps them keep a couple of the seats in the South, the Conservatives still expect to lose some Scottish and Welsh seats, and they'll also have to make up for the 10 DUP MPs that definitely aren't going to go into a confidence and supply arrangement with the Conservatives any time soon. What matters for the Conservatives is how many traditionally Labour Brexit constituencies that they are able to win over, most of which are in the Midlands and North Wales, and in these crucial Labour seats, the Brexit party is still standing. This is why YouGov, one of the big pollsters in the UK, sounded pretty ambivalent about it all, saying Farage's decision to stand aside in currently Conservative-held seats and not in Labour-held seats that the Tories will be looking to gain will likely make very little difference. Despite today's drama, this is unlikely to be a game-changing moment. And Professor John Curtis, the UK's polling guru, said a similar thing, warning against overstating the impact. The interesting thing will be whether it hurts or helps the Brexit party in those Labour constituencies. To the average voter, this might make the Brexit party look like a sort of pressure group instead of a political party. They're no longer serious about winning seats or an election, so why vote for them? In which case, the Conservatives will have a clean run at those seats. Or, it might make them look principled. They've put Brexit ahead of their party politics and are therefore worth voting for, which will make things harder for the Conservatives. The other interesting thing is how it will affect the public perception of the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party have been reluctant to do any sort of deal with Farage because they worry that while it might gain them some votes from hardcore Brexit supporters, 
Any association with Farage will lose them as many votes on the other side, with the softer Brexit supporters and those more classic small-c Conservative voters. While Johnson hasn't done anything, maybe the association alone will be enough to lose him some votes. Anyway, no one really knows. The only thing we know is that polling and public opinion have proved impossible to predict over the past few weeks. So, stay tuned and we'll keep you up to date. Also, I didn't write that last sentence, Zach did, but that was a real tongue twister. You can also hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we release a video. And if you want more from us, you can find TLDR across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name featured at the end of the videos, just like these people, then you can sign up to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.